What's the word, y'all? I created the ultimate top 100 list when it comes to the NBA. This is something that I've been waiting to do forever, and now the season is around the corner, and it's finally here. Some of y'all like Kenny, this goes against your all, all of your philosophies of ranking NBA players. And, and, and you're right. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. So I'm saying this is not my ranking, but I've accumulated every single publication's top 100 lists, put them all in a spreadsheet, added all the numbers, divided all the numbers to make the ultimate top 100 list. So this has Bleach Report, ESPN, The Ringer, CBS Sports, Hoops Hype, The Bleach Report Community, and, I, and one more that... I guess I didn't have in my notes, but seven different publications have put together top 100 lists. And I was waiting for Sports Illustrated and the Washington Post, but they ain't, they ain't done it yet. I, the season starts in a couple days, y'all. What are we waiting for? Watch, they're going to drop theirs tomorrow. I just know, and I'm going to have to adjust my numbers. But regardless, this was a fun few hours of work, honestly. I've never in my life wanted to learn how to code more than this moment because I feel like there's an easier way to do this than to type it in one, then two, then three, all the way down to 107 different times. But either way, I, I got the list. So there are a lot of cool things about the list that I'll show you. The coolest is a total of 133 people got at least one vote for, for top 100 players in the league. And if you, you think about it, that is a, an insane amount of players. I would have to go back through our history to look at last year, the year before that, but I would assume this is a career high. It, it's a testament to how deep our actual league is where a player can be considered not in the top 100 on one list, but definitely in the top 100 in the next one. Another thing I realized is that none of us know what the heck we're talking about. None of us. There, there's a wide range between a lot of these players. And that goes to like my philosophy when it comes to ranking players. Instead of saying that this person's number one, this person's number two, I like to say he's between number three and he's in between number seven. And you kind of get an idea of the, the ranges based on the experts' opinions. And when you think about all the publications and the way they ran their lists, this is an accumulation of a ton of different basketball minds. You think about how many people voted for Bleach Report. When you think about how many people voted for ESPN, CBS Sports, it's not just like one guy taking control of the entire list. We're talking companies worth of writers and viewers. Again, none of us know what we're talking about. Uh, but let's get into the list. So this is what I mean when I say that I wish that I knew how to code because it's basically just in a Google spreadsheet. But what you see right here is the actual ranking. So according to majority of experts, uh, Jokic is the best player in the league, but according to one place, he was as far as four, but for the most part, he is a consensus best player in basketball. Again, what I did is I added up the numbers of every single publication, then found the average, and whoever had the average, the, the higher average, ended up taking the spot. Okay, cool. So Giannis... According to people were number two, his range is one through three. Some people had him three and they had Luca number two and Luca got as low as number six, but as high as number two. So that's what I mean when I talk about that range. We got Curry, Embiid, Tatum, Durant, Booker. Please don't like some players names will be spelled wrong or weirdly Booker. That's just, I was rushing with typing. Just got to, you're just going to have to accept it. This is the top 10 in and then Jimmy Butler and number nine will be Shea Gilgis Alexander. Jimmy is a player that is interesting because in one place he was as high as six and other places he was more like 13. LeBron is another case of a wide range where he was number seven on some people's list, but he got as low as 16 on others, which is extremely, extremely low if you ask me. But you're not. Are you asking? I don't think you're asking me. Now, every other publication has their own philosophies, right? Some of these people like ESPN and Bleach Report are trying to predict the 2023, 2024, and other ones don't really give you a frame of reference of what their thought process is. So um, that also can kind of mess up the experiment. But again, I think this is just overall fun. For example, Damian Lillard and, um, and Anthony Davis, they had the exact same average. So technically, we have Anthony Davis 12 and Damian Lillard 13, where they're really tied at 12, and then Kawhi will be 14 because they both had an average of 12 and a half. Actually, that exists here as well between Joel Embiid and Tatum. They both ended up having a 5.5 averages, so technically, they're tied for fifth um, for, for you Celtics fans that were mad about Tatum being lower than Embiid or, or vice versa. I don't know. Trey Young range was interesting as well, as low as 30. Actually, a lot of people had uh, Trey Young at 30. But in one place, he was number 17. Jalen Brown went from 6 or 17 here to 32 there. Um, and that's why, again, I try to look at it in ranges, but I also try to look at it in tiers. 
because that could be one singular tier of player between 17 and 30, 32. I'm not saying that is the case, but it could be. You could argue that. Also a point that I was saying, nobody really knows what they're talking about um, because that is a huge, huge wide range. I want to just, you know, go through every single one just so you people at home can see where your favorite players are. Uh, so we have De'Aaron Fox at number 17 here. One that was interesting was Ja because ESPN had Ja 35, mostly thinking that, hey, he's going to miss 25 games of the season. So how can he be this valuable if he's missing 25 games? I'm not saying I agree with that, but that was their philosophy. While everyone else had um, around 14, 13, 15, 16, and as low as 21. But that 35 outlier kind of messed up his statistics where his average being um, milli... milli Decimals? What am I trying to say? Decimals lower than De'Aaron Fox. If it wasn't for the ESPN outlier here, then he would be higher than De'Aaron Fox. He'd actually be as high as about 15 on his list if this number wasn't so large. Harden was a player that was really polarizing. This this third column here, D column, is ESPN. I maybe should have put him at this, the E column so it's easier to remember. Either way, ESPN had him at 43. Bleach Report community, community had him at 41. But BR himself had him at 22. CBS Sports had him at like 30, 30 uh, I'm sorry, 23, 23, 23 across the boards. But these few ones here brings James Harden all the way down to 29. As always, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan are right next to each other. Actually, Jalen Brunson and Drew Holiday are tied at 35. Their average is exactly the same. So they are tied at 35. Uh, when you wonder who is the best point guards in the Eastern Conference, well, according to this, majority, uh, Trey Young is number one, but the other guards, point guards at least across the board, are Western Conference guys. So according to the rankings, Trey Young is number one, and then you have Drew Holiday and Jalen Brunson tied with Darius Garland right on their tails, but still beneath them. Paolo at 41 was a very interesting one to see the sophomore year player get that high. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but just interesting. He's one above LaMelo. Um, one full point above LaMelo. Desmond Bain was a guy that was as low as 61 for Bleach Report, but also as high as 36. LaMelo Ball number should be way higher, but I forget who this H column is. Had him at 84, where everyone else was like, oh, he's, he's 30, 40 range. 84? There's there's no way I could get behind that personally. Uh, that's just that's just too low for the production that that Lamelo Ball provides. I understand his team hasn't necessarily been very good under his tenure, but remember that team was like a twenty something early uh, low thirty one team that he came in immediately. They were forty wins, and last year of course they weren't healthy and they were going through a lot of stuff. Um, so hopefully whoever said he was eighty four will realize this season that he's probably a lot higher than that. Let's get to the next group of players that have like Draymond Green. Fred Van Vliet, DeJounte Murray, Kay Cunningham back to back. It was interesting to see a guy like Kay Cunningham. What would the consensus be? Because again, Kate hasn't played a ton of basketball. His rookie season was solid, started off slow, but ended up being solid. Then obviously last year only played like 17 games or so. So as you can see, some people had him at 74. That's the Bleach Report fans. But for the most part, he's consistently in the 50s range. Let's say that. OG Ananobi, a player that was 46 some places, but ended up being down to like 69. Uh, Franz Wagner, 80 in the last place we did, but as high as uh, 52, or I guess 50 is his highest. And then it gets a little bit interesting because the way I kind of did things, for example, Victor Wembanyama is here at the 65th player, right? As you can see at the end of his bar, there's a 101 and a 101, which means that these last two publications did not do any rookies. So Scoot, Wimby, uh, Chet, the guys that you expect to be on his list that is on the list for a lot of other publications, they didn't do any rookies at all. So that brings Wimby down the 65th. But if you just look at the sample size of the people that did rank him, his average was 54, which would have put him at like the 53 range. So he'd be right under Tyrese Maxey as it wasn't for these two numbers bringing him down. So I just thought that was overall interesting. A guy like DeAndre Aiden was high as 49, but on one publication, he did not make the list at all. So his numbers are down too because what for whatever reason, the one group of people was like, nah, he's not that guy. Marcus Smart as well. Marcus Smart had one place that he was not listed at all but he ended up being as high as 58 in other places. Nikola Vucevic had the craziest range out of all of them. And I'm not just saying that because what my fandom lies, but there are some people that was like, hey, Vucevic is still a top 50 player in ball. What have they been watching recently? It beats me. But other places like, nah, Vuce don't deserve to be on this list at all. So they said he's either in the top 50 or missing completely. That's insanity. So, um... The reality is probably in the middle somewhere, like in the 80s and the 70s. 
Um, he's definitely not as high as 57, but he's definitely, I think, in the top 100. I think JJ Reddick went on a whole spiel about ESPN putting together their top 100 list and leaving Derek White off it at all. And I was going into this expecting that there would be more publications to leave Derek White off. Nope, just ESPN. ESPN was the only place like Derek White is not a top 100 player. He was as high as 62 in some places or 53 in others. But ESPN not having him at all broke his rating down quite a bit where he's below Vucevic and Kyle Kuzma and so on and so forth. Jalen Green, another player that did not get rated. Um, this wasn't ESPN. I, let me let me make sure. I think the net E is CS, CBS Sports. No, E is the ringer. So the ringer did not have him ranked at all. And uh, every other place had him on the list. Some people as high as 44. Whoa, I didn't realize that was he got that high. Um, Chris Paul, no votes here on G, but also across the board made it in like the 70s range. But because of that, he's down to 77. Claxton did not get rated at all at ESPN. And I also think that's as inexcusable as the Derek White one. I understand that his offensive game is a lot to be desired. Don't get him the ball to create for himself. But the defensive versatility and all of those things makes me think that he would be a top 100 player. But again, also, I'm not a guy that creates my lists myself. But comparing to some of the other people that made their list versus didn't make their list, Claxton feels like a guy that should have been in there nonetheless. He ends up at uh, 78. Chat, another example of a rookie player that got two 101s at the end of it. So if we got rid of the two 101s, he would be at 75. So it didn't break him down too much. Malcolm Brogdon had two places that said, nah, we don't think you top 100. But the other places had him as high as 50, 56. And that's why I start to make the argument about how the talent level is just so insane that you could look at Malcolm Brogdon and say, absolutely, he's a top 100 player, while other people would be like, no, absolutely not. Here's Scoo Henderson. He would be at 78 if it wasn't for these two ending ones. So right around where Chet is right now. And Jaden McDaniels also didn't make ESPNs. I know this is not about ESPNs list because we already did a video about them, but these were things I did not notice in my original video, but he ended up not making it at all. But for the most part, except for this one place here, he is a consistent 90-ish player. Which makes sense. He's got a lot to, to add to his game. But what he does now, he's really good at. It's just about continuing to add different elements to it. Caruso uh, saw an appearance twice. So one, two, three, four, five, six out of our eight publications said, no, Alex Caruso's not top 100. But the two people that did see him had him pretty high. It wasn't like some of these people don't make the list. And then other places, they're like 92, 93. Like, okay, he's borderline. These other places did not, I think this is CBS Sports, did not have him borderline. It's like, Alex Caruso is comfortably in the top 100, while majority of people was like, nah, not so fast. Shaden Sharp had majority of nuns, and then had a 63 in here. Um, He's tied with Jordan Clarkson. These two, these two people are tied at 101. It was just surprising, because this, this right here, the 92, is the BR community. Which makes sense. He's a young, high-flying, fun, exciting future player. So it makes sense that the, the BR consensus kind of steered young and upside versus production right now. Um, but this last one was like, hey, he's one of them all. <laughs> Bro, this last one has him better than like Kevon Looney, uh, Keegan Murray. It has him higher, 20 spots higher than Jaden McDaniels. And I did go through all these lists and, and I wanted... I didn't want to exclude a publication because I personally thought that their list was kind of crappy. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that because again, these are, are like different basketball minds. And in this case, maybe they prioritize something different, even though I can't say it's right. I can't, I can't, I can't look and see what Shaden Sharp achieved last season versus what Jaden McDaniels achieved last season and say, oh, that's my guy. And even if we're projecting for this upcoming season, I still think there will be growing pains. Although I think Shaden Sharp is going to be a stud one day. Uh, Jaden Jaden McDaniel is Jaden McDaniel's is an all defensive player type player already, and he hit nearly forty percent from three. You know his production, especially when you talk about what he could do on pretty much all thirty teams, un objectively, in my opinion, is better than what Sharp has. But that's like this is our real top one hundred. Jabari Smith Jr. ends the top one hundred. Then after this is where we start talking about the people that did not make the top one hundred necessarily but we're in other people's lists like Shaden Sharp or John Collins or um, Mike Conley Jr. Uh, what is the weirdest name we got? And Yeka Kongwo that's what double O is for the people at home. Um, he, he only placed once. He only placed once in 89 so lower on the list but he did place. Spencer Dinwiddie only placed once 90th but he placed you know we got to get the respect him and Markel Fultz are tied at 121. Uh, Markel placed 
two different times, but lower than what Spencer Dinwiddie placed that one time. And the lowest on the whole list is Kyle Anderson, where he placed once at 99. <laughs> He plays absolutely one time at 99, and then like Grant Williams placed a few different times at 100 and then 97, and uh, KCP placed a couple times off the championship run, but for the most part towards the bottom of the list. So if we're doing what we originally thought j between uh, Nikola Jokic and Jabari Smith Jr., these are the top 100 players in ball. And of course, it's a top 100 list, so there's a lot to be argued here or there. But I'm, I'm waiting to see if Sports Illustrated puts together their list and puts it out on the internet anytime soon. And that will adjust my numbers a little bit. But the, again, these are the respected people that put together lists. You tell me who's too high or too low. Um, tweet them at me or use them in the comment section where I'm always down there. This is the ultimate top 100 list from Jokic to Jabari Smith Jr.